on the processes we have started on the issue of Biafra. We have been approaching the issue in stages. We first wrote letters to the to all northern emirs and chiefs. Later we wrote to the National Assembly. Now we have just taken the third step, stage three. We are coming now from the registry of the Federal High Court of Nigeria, Abuja, where we filed an originating process asking the court to determine finally either the termination completely of the issue of Biafra or, a, or uphold it. And we are also asking for an order restraining the federal legislature from going ahead with the, on, with the current review process of the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, pending the determination of this monumental issue <coughs> of the unity of Nigeria. We are insisting that there has to be a nation first with a people and consent before we have laws to govern the way we live. So, uh, like I said, we have just filed the processes. They are here. They have been endorsed by the registry of the Federal High Court in Abuja. And we have first a motion on notice. The plaintiffs here, applicants, are Nastura Ashu Sharif, Balare Birufai, Abdulaziz Suleiman, and Amino Adam. And the defendants, respondents, are the Attorney General of the Federation, the Senate President, the Speaker, House of Representatives, and the National Assembly. It's a motion on notice brought pursuant to Order 26, Rule 1, and Order 56, Rule 1 of the Federal High Court Civil Procedure Rules of 2019. We are seeking, <clears throat> we are praying for an order of interlocutory injunction restraining the second, third, and fourth defendants from continuing with the process of further reviewing or <coughs> amending the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit. Two. And for such further order or other orders as the Honorable Court may deem fit to make in the circumstance, we have filed four grounds of appeal supported by supported by a 42 paragraph affidavit that is for the motion on notice seeking an injunction to restrain the continuation of the uh, constitutional review to attend to much urgent the much urgent ma matter of uh, uh, the unity of the country which is <coughs> in question. Then we have an originating summons, <coughs> which we also filed today uh, by the same applicants, 
for the same plaintiffs and the same respond defendants. The questions we raised for determination in the originating summons are, one, whether by the combined effect of the provisions of Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, and Articles 1, 2, and 20, sub-Article 1 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, Ratification and Enforcement Act 2004. The fourth defendant is empowered to set in motion a framework for a referendum to allow the southeastern states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to decide on their bid for self-determination. Second question is whether in view of the provisions of Articles 1, 2, 3, 14, and 20, of Article 1 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act 2004, the second and third defendants have the power to call for a joint session of both houses of the fourth defendant to deliberate on the agitation for self-determination by the southeastern states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Number three, whether considering the violent agitation for self-determination by the people of the southeastern states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as deposed to in the affidavit in support of the originating summons and the combined effect of the provisions of Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended and Articles 1, 2, 4, 14, and 20 of Article 1 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, Ratification and Enforcement Act 2004. The second, third, and fourth defendants are not under a legal obligation to provide a framework that will pave way for the self-determination of the southeastern states so as to leave the geographical entity called Nigeria before any further step is taken to review the Constitution. Number four, and if the answers to the above questions one and three, one to three, as, contend, as contended by the plaintiffs are in the affirmative, plaintiffs claim the following reliefs. So these are the reliefs we are claiming. Just very few, we are not asking for much. A declaration that by the combined effect of the provisions of Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended and Articles 1, 2, and 20, so Article 1 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act 2004, the fourth defendant is empowered to set in motion a framework for a referendum to allow the southeastern states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to decide on their bid for self-determination. Two, a declaration that in view of the provisions of articles, of the same provisions, the defendants have the power to call for a joint session of both houses of the fourth defendant to deliberate on the agitation for self-determination by the southeastern states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Number three, an order directing the second, third, and fourth defendants to provide a framework that will pave way for the self-determination of the southeastern states so as to leave the geographical entity called Nigeria before any further step is taken to further amend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And number four, any further order or orders as the court may deem fit to make. So this is the originating summons. After the court might have dealt with the, the originating summons is also supported by 44 paragraph affidavit. Uh, after the court might have uh, fixed a date or might have uh, uh, 
concluded on the motion on notice, that's when the date will be fixed for uh, the originating summons to commence. This basically is why we have asked you to come so that we update you on the third stage we have taken, which is a legal, which is the most legitimate stage. Uh, you are free to ask questions.